So, Governor, we're now in your kitchen. Yes. And we've now reached the boss in yes. the relationship, which is your wife, Mary Pat. Now, Mary Pat, I've been spending a lot of time with your husband today. A fascinating character in many ways. Uh, had a lot to say about you, mainly of the you wear the trousers in this relationship. Is that an accurate description? No, I think we're more of a team than one person wearing the trousers. They say behind every successful man, there's a good woman prodding him on. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you go along with that? Uh, I definitely think I'm a good woman, <laughs> um, but we really do work as a team, and um, we really have helped each other both in our careers and in our personal lives. Did you ever imagine that you'd end up being a governor's wife? Uh, not really, no. Is it better or worse than you hoped? Oh, I think it's been great. It's been really great. It's been a tremendous honor, uh, just such a privilege to represent the state. Really didn't imagine it would be so exciting and uh, eventful. There's lots of talk of your husband possibly running for the presidency. Mm -hmm. When I asked him about it, I sort of got the sense that he didn't feel he was ready and that collectively as a family, you kind of agreed with that. Is that, is that right? Yes, I'd agree with that. We have, uh, as you know, a large family, four children at really pretty crucial ages in their development and uh, a lot of moving parts in this family. So I think as a team, we all decided it probably wasn't the right time. What if your country needs him? <laughs> well, I'm sure his country could use him, but his family needs him. Could you imagine him not one, one day running for presidency? Isn't it just, he was, we went to his school, oh, we went to school this morning. And there he was, he was president of every single thing in the school. So the whole school must have called him president for years on end. He goes to the baseball, no. he wins that. You know, everything he does, he wants to be number one. And he's already been called president mm -hmm. for 10 years. Yeah, look, I think there's so many things Chris can do with the rest of his life after he's governor, hopefully for a total of eight years. And um, I think he could be president. I think he'd be a great president, but I think he'd also be a great CEO. Uh, he'd be a great person to stay home and, you know, teach college classes. I mean, I think he could do anything he wanted. It. What is it about him, do you think, that if it came to, if it came to a presidential race, mm. why should Americans vote for him? Because Chris has an un un unbelievable ability to succinctly analyze a, uh, a problem, come up with solutions, listen to people, and then communicate the solutions. I mean, that's really what I think. And, you know, he's, there's no better communicator I know. And I asked him as a good Catholic boy to tell me about any sins he wanted to absolve himself of. Because you know, I'm a Catholic as well, so I thought we could have a sort of mini confession. Oh, uh, lovely. We need a priest. I told him. That's exactly well, he what I told him. I well, said, he, actually, he actually said that, and then said actually he would only admit these to you. Hmm. Anything you want to share with us? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Nice try, Pierce. Yeah. And what's the single biggest misconception about your husband, do you think? Um, probably that he's mean. I mean, he's just the nicest guy and, and funny and... He's the and nicest, most ferocious prosecutor you've ever you met. There you go. Right? <laughs> 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 but he's a really good person. I mean, as a prosecutor, his overriding, uh, his focus was to never prosecute the wrong person. I mean, people will never know how hard Chris worked at not prosecuting someone that he wasn't absolutely confident they were guilty. Bit of a pussycat, really. Yeah, well, like that. <laughs> we wouldn't go that far. No. Would we? <laughs> You're putting words into my mouth here. <laughs> that could be really damaging. Yeah. So we're going to have a short break and then get to the really interesting bit where we bring in two of your children to tell me what he's really like. Right, you two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're now going to be joined by two of your children, I'm delighted to say. Sarah and Andrew, welcome. Hello. Now, Andrew, you're now very... Because, of course, yeah. you were the one playing baseball when Daddy got his helicopter. <laughs> so were you embarrassed? Were you proud of him? How did you feel? No, I mean, uh, I was really just happy that he was coming to the game. Uh, he told me a, a week in, when we won our last game on, uh, on Friday, he told me that it uh, looks like I think the only way I'm going to be able to get there is the coughed her in so I kind of laughed and said oh, that's well that's fine if you're gonna be able to make it and uh my whole team kind of knew in advance they were they were staring at the helicopter as it landed but uh 
It was good, and we ended up winning, so that was... That was well, I'm very pleased with congratulations, but he, he has said he may do this again. Now, are you happy if that helicopter comes into sight again in the middle of a game? Maybe, maybe it was a good intimidation tactic, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're at an age now, how old are you now? 17. 17. You're, you're an age where you're getting quite political, you're nearly able to vote. Mm -hmm. When you look, at the, are you a Republican by, by nature, would you say? Yes. So when you look at the other candidates, yeah, he doesn't part of you think? Wow, I wish the old man would run, because he'd have a better chance. Um, you know, well, I, I guess part of me thinks that a little bit, but I, I don't think for us personally as a family and for him, it, it would be the best idea. Hey, come on, I, I understand your kid's sister being scared of the White House. You, <laughs> you have already measured out the Lincoln room, haven't you? I mean, come on, how cool would that be? Imagine, yeah. the, imagine the chicks. Hey, you want to swing by the White House tonight for a cocktail? Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. Oh, I've definitely thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it would definitely be cool, as I said, but, you know, probably not right now. Maybe in a few years, though. Now, you two know your dad better than most people, so when he looks me in the eye and says, it's 100% certain I will not run in 2012, should I believe him? Yes. No doubt about it. When he says that, he yes. means it. Because I ask him that all the time, too. Like, I'll, I'll, hear, I'll hear stories and stuff. And you keep having to ask him if, <laughs> if when he says it, you believe him. Well, I just want to be sure, because I just don't want him to. So uh, I'm I, making sure you're not running. Now, I saw back at the school pictures of your dad when he won the, the state championship baseball. And he looked athletic like you do, Andrew. But he did say in my interview earlier that one of the reasons he wants to lose weight now is for his children. What do you think? Would you like him to? Of course, yeah. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I don't know. I think uh, Sarah's pretty concerned about it. She expresses that often. And of course, everyone would love him to lose some weight. Sarah, but, why are you concerned yeah. about it? Um, I just want him to be healthy, and I think he'd be happier. And I just think, you know, it'd be one less thing people could you know, like, say about him, just... Yeah, I mean, as his daughter, do you get upset when people poke fun at him? Oh, uh, yeah, because it's not like, you know, he chooses that necessarily, and it's just, I think it's just a stupid thing to, you know, make fun of him for, but, you know. Finally, you two, what would you say are the best things about your dad and the most annoying? <laughs> <laughs> the best things, uh, I think the best things are that he's always someone I can talk to about almost anything. Uh, you know, he's been there for me my whole life as a coach, as a father. Uh, and uh, we just pretty much can relate to everything together. So that's really nice. A lot of people say we're a lot alike. So that, that's, You are alike? Yes. And Sarah, I mean, I can't even imagine what he's like when you try and bring boyfriends right now. I bet he's a nightmare. He told me that um, in the campaign, I asked if I was going to have to have state police with me all the time. He said only when... He thought I was in danger, and that was whenever I was with a boy. <laughs> I was not too happy about that. Um, what would you say are his best and worst characteristics? Okay, um, best? I don't know, kind of like what Andrew said, he's always been there, and he's, he, I think he uh, does his best, and he succeeds in making his family a priority, and just kind of always reminding us, like, it, like before he went out to give his speech on election night, the six of us, huddled in like a circle and he's just like this is all crazy but just remember that these six people here were you know all that really matters right now and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna try to do our best for New Jersey and you know just it really reminded it reminds us all the time about how your family's gonna be your best friend and they'll they'll always a be a group there. political huddle I like it <laughs> and what would you say is a negative about about your dad um He's very, well, he makes fun of me for this, but I always say he's very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just, um, like, blasting, like, like, Usher music in the car. Oh, like, no. <laughs> you just killed off any chance he has. He plays Usher music? <laughs> See? Well, look, it's been great to meet you. You're obviously a very close, loving family. And whatever does happen, I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks, Thank you very Thanks, much. Thank you.